tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Desperate times call for desperate measures, Jabes. What? I'm mixing it up. I'm mixing it up today. Uh, voice is a little rough. Uh huh. Got a little bit of uh, illness here, and uh, the cure for this is is an Astros victory tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, if you're watching on YouTube and you're like, "Hey, man, why are you head to toe in green?" With a very Brett Michaels bandana on. Right, a larger bandana. I went, I went high bandana uh-huh. today. Um, oh, that is Brett Michaels. That's what he, he liked to do. Correct, because mm-hmm. so far, the Major League Baseball playoffs that we wanted have been poisoned. Posed. Poison. Nailed it. Boom. Brett Michael. Yeah, there oh, we go. Oh, oh, oh. There we blamo, go. Blamo, 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 blamo. <clears throat> and... I think, I think we need to mix it up. Whenever I was in a rut, and when I felt like I was in a rut, I would wear green. Okay. I didn't have very many things that were green. I used to have this one T-shirt that I loved from the Memorial. Uh, it was a golf tournament in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Usually played right around uh, the Memorial Day. That's, okay. They called it the Memorial Tournament. Um, but they had these, these, these green T-shirts. It was the most comfortable shirt I ever owned. Somebody stole it, but it always brought me good luck if I was in a rut. Today, I got the green bandana on. You do. And a green jacket on. And so it just makes you feel better to wear green? It makes me feel lucky. Okay, yeah. And that There's makes something sense. about like St. Patrick's Day and things like that where it's just like, hey, I don't wear a lot of green. I don't, yeah. have a, I don't own a lot of green things. Right. And like St. Patrick's Day, you go out and buy something usually or whatever. I always had this green T-shirt, and it, uh, it just felt lucky. And what happened to it? So today, it's gone. Somebody swiped it. Uh, so RIP, wherever it is. Sure. But today, we need it. Talk to your boys last night. Who? Talk to the Bronx Blue. And I said, hey, man, we really need an Astros victory, or we're probably not going to get to party with you next week. You messaged them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, and they were I, probably like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, and they were like, well, we're really hoping for the Rays, and I was like, don't, because then we can't go and party with you. Yeah. And I understand it, by the way. The Rays totally. are shitty. Um, I don't know how they magically have gotten to a game five with Houston. They have... I don't know how we call them shitty if they've gotten to a game five with Houston. <laughs> but anyway. They're, they're just starting relievers. Um, I, I've never seen this approach before. Super weird. Half their fans works, didn't show up. Though. Half the stadium was empty for the last game at home. Yeah. Um, and, and you're probably saying to yourself, Ross, why do you need luck? My beloved Braves last night. Um, so five minutes in to the game, I am McConaughey in a Lincoln commercial. I'm at my best. Uh, 15 minutes later, I am full blown AIDS McConaughey mm-hmm. from uh, Dallas, Texas Buyers Club. They scored 10 runs in the first. Mm. Game is over within 15 minutes. People weren't even in their seats yet. They were with their children getting hot dogs. Totally. And, and it already, I mean, their, their dreams got squashed before they even sat in their seat. And that's a sad. Yes. Sad thing. I, I, and I did have friends at the game with their children last night, and they were like, what the fuck? Um, and the pictures were so depressing on Facebook. Because I'm from Atlanta. Right. Um, I'm a diehard Braves fan. Mm-hmm. Am I used to losing? You bet. Sure. Bet I am. Uh, and especially in playoff. Yes. 100%. That's where you're really used to losing. Yeah, because we were up in that series 2-1, and all we had to do was just win one of the last two games. We were up uh, 3-1 in and, and one of them, and it came back in one. And then, um, then they broke the record last night for most runs in an inning Fun. with 10. 
Good and for the them. first inning in the game was over at that point. Mm-hmm. Then they broke the Cardinals. Then they broke the record for most runs through three innings, which was 13. And the final ended up being 13 to one. Obviously, I'm pissed, not shocked, but, but pissed. And I called Dan because we had had uh, my co-host on Drinking Bros. Um, we also did the sports show together. And I said, hey, man, these are two game fives on tonight. The visitors just won the first one. What are the chances the visitors win the second one? Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, I put 500 on it. And I was like, oof, no way. Dodgers at home. Really? Eesh. Yeah. Game starts off two bombs for the Dodgers. They're up. They're up 3-0. It's awesome, right? And I think, all right, maybe because sports is in trends, Jesse. So if this happens, uh, in my mind now, I'm thinking, well, the Astros are playing at home tomorrow. They're next in line. This has got to, this is going to shake out. And uh, get to the ninth inning, or get to the eighth. They're still up 3-1. to one. Fine. Kershaw comes in. Not the brightest idea for the, for the Dodgers. Manager might get fired because of it. Kershaw hasn't had the greatest postseason history. Gives up two solo home runs back to back. The Dodgers' greatest pitcher that they have. 3-3, three, three, and then it goes to extra innings. At this point, I'm like, eh, it's getting late. And I'm like, man, we had to get up. We got a couple shows today. We're getting ready for New York. I'm like, maybe I'll go to bed. Maybe I'll go to bed and just uh, call it a day. I'll watch just the top of the 10th. You know, I'm sure this will go on forever. Grand slam home run from a Nationals player who is arguably having the worst series of his entire career and made up for it with one hit. Boom. Dodgers are now gone. So it's two visiting teams on the road who have won game fives that are moving on. I can't stress how much we need the Astros to win this. We pre-bought the tickets knowing in our hearts and minds that it would probably be Yankees Astros. Uh, we get some live shows set up around the stadium. <laughs> Astros were up 2-0. Now it's 2-2 and they've got to win tonight at home. I'm trying to break whatever curse is going on and, uh, and just have a, a lovely time. Because we have a, a, a big guest we're supposed to interview, hopefully, knock on wood, in New York. And the days that, that the games would be switched to, not only are you not there, but I'm supposed to be at another right. thing for this interview. So I'm wearing green everything today, even boxers. Boxers are green now. So I just we got to reverse Good this somehow. You. Yeah. I got to reverse this curse. Well, we'll see. It's been a wild postseason. We'll see tonight. Well, yes. by the time this airs. We'll, we'll, know, we'll have known the answer. You'll um, know. Yeah. So uh, this is for folks watching the video show, though. I want you to. Really just, see all the green. Yep. Because yeah. it's been poisonous the last two nights where I'm just like, man, we've got to get out of this funk. You have any superstitions? Mm. No. That I like do? Mm-hmm. No, I sometimes just wear the same underwear for a week. Yeah, just to feel alive again? or It's just a superstition. Yeah. What does it help you with? And what does superstition mean? Probably want to look that up. <laughs> Probably should uh, check the, the old joking. dictionary No, I did that. want to. I wanted my mom to get my dad's Yankee hat mm-hmm. from him um, to bring it with her. Oh, no way. Like his. That's awesome. Like. You know, yeah, the yeah, sweat yeah. stain. It's been washed before, but the old, like, yep. Yankees hat he always has worn since I can remember, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, So I'm like, I don't know if he'll let me use it, but I feel like, my God, that's got to bring some kind of luck, right? I, I go, th- I if you can't so. go to the stadium, yeah. your hat can go. Good enough, right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, sure, that's awesome. Yeah, sure, that's rad. Yeah, great. It's almost like I'm there. Ugh. Well, thanks look, a lot. <laughs> if, if the Astros lose, he can have our tickets. There you go. Yeah, we'll fly him out. There you go. Fly him out. Somebody's got to go to that game. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. I mean, I have a really whole old Yankees shirt that I've worn to all the games that I've seen live, mm-hmm. and then a hat that my dad gave me. So it's like, I'll wear that if I need like okay something to happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Superstition. 
I used to in sports a lot when I played sports as a kid. I, I had a lot of superstitions. Like, uh, but I think it's born of like this worked one time, so I have to do it every time, right? So it's like, what is it that worked for you this one time that you were like, I guess I have to do it every time because it like we pulled out the win and I was wearing what or I did what, right. you know? Uh, mine was um, mine was like motivational things, even as a young kid. See, it seems strange now, like thinking back on it. Um, I used to write initials on my hands for goals that I wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. And that started in like fourth grade. And my mom would ask me what the initials stood for, and I never told her. Um, mm -hmm. But usually it was some form of goal that I was working toward, even in like fourth grade. I had wristbands uh, that I would wear during sports that I would write yeah, yeah. my favorite players' numbers underneath them. Mm -hmm. um, and all I had was like a black marker. Mm -hmm. So after the games, my arms would be like caked in black and be like what what are you doing yeah um i had a lot of those little things uh and the, re the reason why i think about this is uh somebody hit me up and said hey did you hear about uh sid crosby's jock strap and i was like no i, I didn't hear about that the, the dude for the penguins like their uh the hockey player mm -hmm. same jock strap since middle school to current day he's in his 30s japes and so, and the jock strap is junk protector. Is there a cup in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put a cup in it. Yeah. You put a cup in it. Yeah. The jock strap strap itself is like a thong, right? It, it goes around the outside, yeah. But it's not actual underwear. It's like strings that go around. Well, there's a string that goes around your waist. It's not a string. It's like a uh, elastic. elastic band that goes around your waist. I'm just getting a visual. That's yes. All. So. The two elastic around. Yes. And then elastic waist. Yeah. And then the cup. Correct. Uh, for the balls and the dick. And the dick. Yeah. I reckon you could keep the same size jock strap, but then level up on the cup size or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can, but you've got to stay, you know, whatever. So uh, I, I, I told somebody, I was like, this can't be true. And they sent me a thing of him doing an interview after a game. And it's this filthy, disgusting jockstrap is just hanging there. And that's one thing you maybe don't, you know what I mean? Tom Brady's, uh, after that, because this led me down a rabbit hole of everybody else, Tom Brady's worn the same shoulder pads since like 1995. So that's, you're going on 25 years of like, and that was high school shoulder pads for him. Right. So I'm, try, I'm trying to mix it up here. Okay. Trying to mix it up, getting the mix. Uh, it's one of those weeks where it's um, awesomely busy. Like I love going to New York, and uh, it's awesomely busy for us. But every day we have meetings and interviews and all that stuff planned out, and uh, I want this one to work. I want this one to work. Yeah, when you, <laughs> it's a the magical trouble, place. Here's the, what Yankee Stadium. Oh, it really is. But the trouble with planning everything to the, I know. I know. Day, hour, minute, blah, blah, blah. Ugh. Something is always going to get messed up, Correct. right? So I don't want this to be the thing, but I don't want the other thing to get messed up either. So it's kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. We'll you know see. what I mean? We'll see. We, we, a, a lot when of. When you plan that much and, well, and hang your hat on a lot of different things, it's going to, something's going to happen. We've been something's asked to go through. to a Yankees game for how long with those guys? Um, two years probably. Um, yeah, yeah, because we've probably done since shows last since last season. Because we get a lot of requests of like, "Hey, man, come to this sporting event or, or this mm -hmm. or this or this," and it's like, it's got to be worthy enough to cover where the excitement is there. You know, mm -hmm. this is definitely like shit. Yankees took care of business. Uh, yeah, and on a selfish note, on the sports show every year we do a um, uh, way too early prediction show before the season starts for every sport, all, all major sports. Mm -hmm. And I picked the Yankees to win the World Series. Who did Dan pick? Astros, right? Astros, yeah. yeah. So, uh, crazy. I know. So it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we did it for Clemson last year. We picked Clemson. Mm -hmm. Picked the Red Sox last year. They won. Uh, if this happens again, I mean, we put a lot of, a lot of coin on it before the season started because the odds right. are crazy. Yeah. And they're the only ones so far out of – all of the teams who have looked great where everybody else seems to have a weakness and you're like, all right, I can see how this team can be beat. The Yankees just housed them mm. three straight sweep. 
Um, so yeah, uh, and then there's other places that you go that are like I was saying, Yankee Stadium is a magical place where they're just kind of inspirational. Where you're like, man, that's one of those places where you go there and you're like, this is amazing. This mm-hmm. is a really amazing place to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a nice pick me up, you know? Yeah, it's a nice little pick me up of like, yeah, I like going there. Oh, do Yankee Stadium? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it's I've probably only gone maybe three or four times in my life, and uh, cause even Have the you've been to Shea. Uh yes, well the old one it's not not there anymore. There's a new they got a new ballpark there. Oh, they got a new one too. Uh-huh. Um, but the Yankees, the way they did it, it is like the old ballpark. Only yeah, it's nicer. Yeah, obviously. So, uh, whereas Shea Stadium, they tore that down and then they put up like a state of the art. Yeah, the the Yankee Stadium. <clears throat> I think they had to stay true to the old. You have to. I, you yeah. always should, I think. I Just do too. Make it new. Yeah. But have it like if someone that had been to the old one walked in, they would be like, okay, it's just a nicer, same stadium. Right. And I don't get nostalgic about a lot of things, but there's a, there's a few places where I'm like, oh man, it's just when you walk in, you it's like a deep exhale where you're like, this is one of the most perfect creations there is. Yeah. And I'm not a, obviously, you know, the hugest Yankees fan. I'm a Braves fan, obviously, mm-hmm. but uh, um, our stadium's never compared to Yankee Stadium. Uh, the only one I could say was probably Wrigley, too, is that he's got that feeling. Oh, hells, yeah. Um, lived in L.A. all those years. Dodger Same Stadium, deal, though. Uh, yeah. Angel Stadium, it's new, and, you know, look, the garlic fries, I respect, obviously, at both those stadiums, but, meh, you know. Giant Stadium? Giant Stadium's really nice. It's really nice. Really nice. It's not as like historic feeling, but it's just no. so nice. Yeah, <laughs> but there's just, there's those couple places where you're like, all right, cool. But um, anyway. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Hence the green. Uh, we're, we're trying to break some form of streak here for the, uh, for the games going on. I know. Because we, you know, we pick, we pick them every Wednesday over there on, on Drinking Bro Sports. And uh, we have not been correct. Uh, on the you i tell i tell people all the time do not bet individual baseball games like that like bet Mm -mm. a series no 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 no, bet a series yeah 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 um, yeah yeah. uh dan bet the individual baseball games and yeah he had a house other than last night he picked the nationals well he just will not listen yeah i know i know are you excited to go yeah to what new york yes <laughs> to what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To where? Well, I go I go a lot of places and I do a lot of things. You know what I mean? Just in general. Do you? Oh yeah. yeah. So I was wondering like which thing? Sure. Which thing are you talking about? Very oh, on yeah. the go girl. Trip to yeah. 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 Um I got a, a weird invite for you this morning. For me? Yeah. I did what? and I wanted to to run this by you. There's some things that we just do live on air that I just don't tell you about. It's just because I want to see your reaction. Most things. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, my doctor, my sweet-ass doctor, Dr. Frank, mm-hmm. who we love, mm-hmm. um, his wife is about to run her first marathon. And really? Yes. And so in town, I guess there's like a marathon trainer that lives here. Oh, okay. You can take like classes once a week or whatever. Um, so I said, look, bring it up to my wife tomorrow. And I guess there's like five women that are all training for just to do one. Okay. And uh, so I said, look, when she comes, because you're going in to see him tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and uh, I could probably do two sesh training sessions and run. That's it. what I was going to ask you. Is it, he was like, what kind of runner is she? And I said, she's the type of girl who can just not run for six months, get up the next day and run s- 10 miles. 10 miles. Yes. And that's, that's who you that's are. That's my like, like, max, though. So I'd have, I need a trainer to get me to a place of getting up and just running 26 miles. Right. And so I go, what about your wife? What's, what's the story there? And he yeah. goes, oh, well, you know, she's never run a marathon, but uh, she, did, she did run track at NC State. And I was like, oh, that's, well, there that's a little you go. different. There so, you go. That's a little different. So you can run that by her tomorrow. and uh, Yeah, see what. And see what she said. But it, it was funny because he, it, and you can speak on this more than I can because you love running outdoors. Um, he was saying that this is her favorite time of year. Yes. Because it's like, you know, 68 today or whatever yeah. it is. And uh, it's so, better conditions for running. Yeah. So it's the best. You don't want it to be too cold, mm-hmm. like 50s, 40s, um, because then you start to like not be able to breathe as well. Right. So 
I train, I have been running, I guess training or whatever, running a couple times a week in 80 to 90 degree weather. Yeah. So that when it turns, like I used to do this before California, because then I'll go there and I'll just be like, you feel like you can run forever. Yeah. Because you have been running in, it's like tying your your shoes like way too tight so that when you take them off, it's like, holy shit, right? Yeah, yeah. So- yeah, it is the best time because we start running a little bit in the summer and it's so fucking hard. And then now you're like, dude, perfect. Yeah. Perfect conditions. Yeah. So you got, you got the invite, James. Okay. You, to got, tra- you got the invite. To train, to train for yeah. the marathon. Because you said you, I think you always said you wanted to do, what was it, Charleston? I wanted to do Charleston. It's in January though. Okay. Which like, think about, I always think about that weather in Charleston in January. It's like cold. last year. Yeah. When I like the time that it was supposed to be, mm-hmm. I was it was freezing, and I'm like, dude, I couldn't do it. But I want to do it in Charleston because I think it'd be a gorgeous run. Do you know awesome. what I mean? Yeah. And ends with like a shrimp and grits like party, Does beer really? party, yeah. And it'd be fun. I thought I'm, for I'm, like the whole family to go, yeah. and then we can stay someone there, somewhere there, and you guys wait for me at like the whatever end. Oh part. yeah, the finish line. So I thought that would be cool, but dang, can I run in January weather? I'm not sure. And then also you're going through Christmas eating, Thanksgiving eating, New Year's eating, and then you're going to run a marathon. Like you have to not have any fun those holidays. So it has to be something that I really really fucking get ready for sure what are you looking at? uh I'm, I'm looking uh over there speaking of the holidays and, oh, and what's coming um, up uh jamie if you wouldn't mind grabbing uh a bottle of luke belair for me we got a new sponsor Ooh, for the holidays whoops. and i left the bottles over there whoopsie day whoopsie ding dongs I mean, and I uh grab it, I, guess. I wanted to present no jamie's right here um i wanted to pr- present them to you live on air jesse oh you wanted to present it to me this is your dream yeah, to have an alcohol, wine, champagne sponsor. I you mean, fucking bet your ass. Bingo, bango, Dodge, Durango. Bel Air, it's so fancy. Yeah, it it's is so actually. Luke. It Luke. is. I'm going to put it, uh, put it right so up here. So it's a French wine, right? Luke Bel Air, yeah. So they're pretty famous. Their rosé is like number one in the world. Yeah. Um, and then they've got like 80 it's different. It's like a sparkling rosé. I've yeah. heard people love Everybody loves it. this shit. So when they hit us up, we were like, yes, we will We will do this. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do it on both shows. Okay. And uh, I'm amped for it. And they sent 48 bottles. <laughs> Oh, okay. It was the greatest gift of all time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll spell it out. It's uh, Luke, L-U-C-B-E-L-A-I-R-E dot com forward slash drinking bros. And that's going to get you 30% off. And, uh, th- dude, it knocks it down to like 25 bucks. And this is like the high, the most high-end shit you can get. And they ship it right to your house, which is awesome. So I'm super stoked about it. When 48 bottles showed up yesterday, I was like, you're doing it right. You're doing it tight. This is the life we've always wanted. And you're doing it all night. Yes. So the uh, life we always wanted. They is sent alcohol. velvet bathrobes with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. Nice. So everything you've wanted, your dreams finally came true. Oh. And uh, usually we do a call with the sponsors and just chat with them about the product and everything else. The owners actually took the call with us. But I was just that's like, awesome. Jesus Christ, man, that's crazy. That never happens. Usually you talk to somebody underneath, you know, and they're, they kind of give you the rundown of the product and everything. Right. Um, I, and then we, we always make them send it to us of like, hey, we have to like this product first if we're going to actually have it on the show. Right. So we got one bottle of it and we drank it and we were like, dude, well, we're in. Like, this is the goddamn best. Right. And then afterwards... Um, once we called them, we were like, hey, we're in. And uh, it was one of those things where we're like, can we get some more bottles of this? And then, boom, 48 show up. I mean, product de France, you guys. How nice is that? This is, I mean, this is a nice so the bottle. Reason, What's their, their price point is? is So with the 30% off here, because this, okay. this is what you get for uh, – LukeBelair.com uh, forward slash drinking bros, L U C B E L A I R E dot com 
forward slash drinking bros, you get thirty percent off, so it knocks it down to like twenty five bucks, right? And they ship. Okay, it Okay, nice, but it's really nice stuff. I, I know. Usually, this is like I don't know, fifty bucks a bottle or, or whatever, right? Um, but now that we have them as a sponsor, they're like, hey man, we'll do thirty percent off. And the reason why we took them on now is because we're going into holiday season. Yes. This is mandatory for every holiday party that you go to or somebody's house. I hope have to nobody bring... we know watches because I'll be like, guys, <laughs> look what I got you. Bought it myself, right? I know. Because they'll be like, holy shit. Yeah. You didn't they'll have be to like, do that. They'll be like, what? I know. They'll be like, oh, stop. It's one of those, oh, you didn't have to do that. If I bring it's the like... rosé one, uh, the girls will lose their minds. Lose a derman. So it, it's... Uh, it's one of those problems I think you run into at the at the grocery store because you look if you live in a neighborhood you got a lot of friends and all that stuff right you're always trying to look for a bottle that looks expensive right but is like mm, twenty bucks right because I don't show uh, which no one should right you don't show up empty handed no you can't you do have that. to bring something yeah for those of you that end up that show up empty-handed yeah yeah you gotta bring something grow up and usually it's a bottle of of something it's part of growing up don't you feel like it is yeah you learn uh, that yeah later in life of like so but yeah for the holidays especially with champagne Mm -hmm. you go up i've even like asked the wine guy or whatever i'm like what is like good but not uh, yeah 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 not uh, exactly expensive yeah but um this i feel like is both Mm mm-hmm Dude, grab a box of this, right? And you'll be set for every holiday party that you go to. I think you can get like four or eight or something like that. And then, then you're you're good to go. So that way it's like, hey, man, you show up and they think you bought a really expensive bottle, which it typically is, but now it's 30% off. And you're There's like, yeah, three different kinds, bucks. no? So it's like gold, rosé. Rosé, uh, Lux. Okay. And then uh, Lux rosé. And yeah, man, fuck, LukeBelair.com forward slash drinking bros. 30% off. This will be your holiday go-to of like, hey, you mean a lot to me. And now here's a I bottle care of about bubbly. You. I really care about you and I'm rich, right? Because that's what you kind of want to say is like, I care about you and I'm also rich. No, you want to say, I care about you. And because it's Christmas or Thanksgiving, I'm going to give you something nice because chances are I brought you natural light the rest of the year when and I went to your house. by doing that, I'm telling you that I'm rich is what you also want to tell people no you don't um but but yeah you want you want it to look nice you want it to be like i have enough money to buy this for you yeah little do they know you don't and you don't need to no i remember uh i remember fuck i was i think 23 or 24 uh and it was right after the new guy we finished shooting and we were going to a christmas party uh i get invited to like this highfalutin like producer's christmas party and I, I was like, oh, awesome, man. We're going to rage. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's, it'll be fun. And it'll go you know, all night. And you go to a few houses on the streets uh, for the neighbors and everything. And I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Phone hangs up. And then he calls me right back. And he goes, by the way, you got to bring something. Right? You know that. And I was like, oh, we, we, we got to. And he's like, yeah, man. Uh, look, I realize you're 23 or 24. Like, you've got to bring something to the host of these things. And I was like, oh, shit. All right, cool. And then there was a long pause, and he goes, don't bring, like, two buck chuck. Like, right. nothing like that or whatever. And I was like, all right, well, what, what should I get? What's the, you know, what do you get for something like that? And uh, he ran down, like, a list of wines that was, like, 20 bucks or something like that. Very similar to this. And I was right. like, all right, awesome. And he goes, this way no one will know because it looks expensive, and they don't know what you really paid for it, and then you're just, you're not an asshole. And, right. Uh, that was my first like welcome to the welcome to the big leagues kid. Like, hey, mm-hmm. you're no longer in college anymore. What do you show up to people's houses? You should bring something. Right. And that was when I learned my lesson. Uh, but it was an older person who taught me that. Sure. You know, what about you? What about me? When when did you learn like, hey, man, I've got to start. It was um, it was more recent than I'd like to admit. Really? I mean, it's weird because you're a great cook and you always bring a dish by more recent. It was like it was before my other friends, for sure. Like in L.A. OK, I heard it somewhere, learned it somewhere where of like an older lady had said, like, don't ever show up anywhere empty handed. And so the cooking thing and bringing bringing food and stuff 
was born of not having a lot of money. Like I can't buy a nice bottle of wine, but I could make like a nice dish that doesn't cost a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So I guess that's where that came from. How but o- before my 20s. Okay. Before my, way before my friends were doing it. Yeah. So I was the one that would like bring something. I know your friends and that makes sense. That makes like total I, sense. I don't think they do to this day. Oh, God. One of them probably does. Because you don't, it doesn't matter what type of money you make. You got to bring something. You bring something. That's what I'm saying. You know, whether it's like you make something, like I would make these like pastries from uh, like crescent rolls, but like put like cream oh, cheese yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. jam in there and yeah. it costs the whole thing costs like five bucks. bucks, But if you make it look like a heart or something like this, it looks like either you need to spend a lot of time on it or money. It's kind of like those are the two things, right? Maybe. To a certain level house, right? Maybe this should be your cooking show. Never. Don't come empty handed. Yeah. And then. That could be nice. So like. Cheap stuff. Yeah. Like. That is great to bring to parties because for. Anybody at home, and I don't think we've talked about this, but we're, we're, we've been trying to get Jesse to do a cooking show. Yeah. Because we have a brand new studio. Which I want to do. Huge place, uh, gorgeous kitchen in there. Yeah. And it would be awesome. And we want to call it Jabe's Against the Machines and then show you making stuff. Um, right. <laughs> but that could be the, the thing. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Or don't come empty handed. Is Yeah, don't come empty handed. And then it's like, hey, man. Here's on a budget Not how to make something or awesome. something. Yeah. Um, like even to like people's just like house parties or just like come over and hang out. Like I would always bring something. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Like just to watch the OC or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, that could be fun. Yeah. I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd be fun. I could awesome. be like a nicer more relatable giada yeah because i i was thinking about i was thinking about this last week um because we were talking about it and uh it's like man what what do you do that hasn't been done in that space i mean have i i I haven't seen that i don't think i mean that's a very martha stewart thing but not on a budget right yeah she's not on a budget no giada's not on a budget yeah she's buying like the best mozzarella yeah and prosciutto. And let's face it. I mean, they're, they're, they outclass everybody. And it's just like, eh, I can't do that shit. But it's attainable. Mar- you know, it's like it's aspirational marketing, right? So through them, it's the same thing that Whole it's Foods. It's funny. I don't think I've heard that term before. Same thing that Whole Foods does. Where you're just like, I could be this person, right? Yeah. If I just buy this stuff. Yeah. Then everything else falls into place. If I buy this really expensive yeah. <laughs> lavender bushel, then I, ergo, I am Gwyneth. That's funny. Aspirational marketing. It's true, Because it's clearly out of your league, right? It's yeah. clearly not who you are. And who can fucking do that? Who can live like that? But if you see someone doing it that kind of looks like you a little bit and they have the kids, but everything's perfect and... You know, whatever you're yeah. like, I can do it. Yeah, I just need to buy this one thing. <laughs> I just need those truffles. I just need this one thing of truffles. Straight or out I of just the ground need, like, from Italy. This like bu- bouquet of mm-hmm. like fresh flowers, wild, seasonal, and then I, when I bring them home, my whole house will be marble and white. Yeah. As soon as I get these flowers, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, somebody was talking about that. It's the thing of like the the food that sits in your fridge because of your aspirational fucking shopping spree. Yeah, that's like I'm gonna cook fresh tilapia or whatever. You put it in the fridge. You have pizza that night. Yeah, and you never fucking cook it. For dudes, it's uh, Costco samples that you're like, oh my god, that's the best sausage I've ever had spicy cheese jalapeno mm. whatever there you go blah, blah blah there you go and then you make one and then you're like man this is really fucking hot uh or this is like not spi- <laughs> yeah it's like jesus christ yeah it did not seem that spicy in the store right right um the person that you are in the store is not the person that you are when you come home and that's the no. whole marketing ploy right 
Yeah. You are a different person in there. Anything's possible. <laughs> You're not home in your dingy apartment <laughs> having to make the fucking sausage yourself, mm -hmm. right? You are in a world where everything's effortless for you. You just, you take the bite and it's right there. Yeah. In your house. And how easy could that be, right? God, those Costco samples get me every time. You know what does it too is Trader Joe's. So they do a thing where they like, put two products that are on sale or whatever uh -huh. and make a thing like a special little sandwich or baguette toasted thing with all these different ingredients that are on sale. Got it. So you buy all the different things because you're <laughs> going to make that at home just like they made it. You're going to do that because how easy it's all sitting right there on a tray. The Trader Joe's guy yeah. is sitting right there. He, he made can do it. it. I can do it. He made it on the little grill, the little George Foreman right next to him. I could do that. I need to get the grill. The George yeah. Foreman, but other than that, I am doing this. Well, look. And then it sits in the fucking fridge. Forever. And rots, just like every tomato I've ever bought. In. This is why we need your show. Um, it would be awesome, I think. Uh, right in time for Christmas. <laughs> right in time. Yeah. Bring a $5 pastry dish of pastries for $5 that looks like it's from France. France. It looks amazing, like it's from France. Yeah, just like this, just like uh, Luke, Luke Blair. Yeah, bring a little Luke Blair. Mm -hmm. Use Ben more on the champagne than the pastry, and that's how it fucking should be. Always, yes. always. Because let's face it, the best pastries are always the cheapest. Is I that could, true? I think so. <laughs> I mean, I could butt fucking. I'm sure there's a lot of people cake. in France a that will a, ch um, a child's birthday cake. Is uh, there anything better than a child's birthday cake or one of those? Yes, but yeah, those uh, giant giant cupcakes with uh, four inches of icing filed to the ceiling. That's fair, I guess. It's That's weird. Fair. And like my super white trash pastry thing wise, that I love more than anything in this world. If you ever wanted to please me, pastry wise. Go down to Great American Cookie at the fucking mall. Really? That's it. That's my Oof. end all be all. Something in white icing. Mm. Just a nice $16 medium cookie cake that no one else eats but me. Mm. And that's my, that's it. That's it for me. <laughs> now you're a different story. When we go to these restaurants, yeah. you'll, you'll try everything across the board, um, which is great. I'm a simple man. I want to try. Sweets. Speaking of New York and sweets, I want to go to Milk Bar. What's what's that? Do you remember the crack pie that I make for Christmas? Ah, yes. Yeah. So this is the original inventor of okay. crack pie is this Tulsi girl, Christina Tulsi or whatever. And she owns Milk Bar. Apparently, there's a fucking line around the corner. Yep. I don't know if we'll... Clearly, with our sketch, I won't have time to wait in that line. But maybe I could find an opening. Yeah. You can peek in there. We did that with, we, we, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we did it with, with uh, Griff's that night. And then uh, we're staying two streets over from Magnolia Bakery. So have you been to Magnolia? No. Oof, What's that's that? good. That's a line as well. Hmm. Um, it was in that Andy Sandberg song. Oh, okay. That, the first one. That's, uh, it's like a classic yeah, bakery? Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's, there's always lines and it's, it's crazy. Like, so... Maybe we can pop on over there too, in case in case things get uh, dicey. It's who is it? What's her name? Caroline. Who makes the milk bar? Yeah, milk bar. What's her name? Uh, Christina Tulsi. Okay. Yeah. Is she famous? Uh, she is famous. She uh, had a a chef's table. She had a chef's table. You know Momofuku at all? Have you ever heard of Momofuku? Yes, Fuku? I have. Yeah. So she started at Momofuku, mm -hmm. um, David Chang's restaurant. And may, was making the desserts for them. And he helped her open the place right next to it called Milk Bar. And Got now it. she's like a fucking millionaire. They do like delivery across everywhere in the U.S. Really? now. Like it's a. Shit. Who talked about it? Fucking Anderson Cooper. Uh, a Coops. Talked about it one time on some show he was on. He said, have you heard of this? Yeah, yeah. Milk bar. Apparently, he goes, it's crack pie. And then ever since then, it's... It, it exploded? It is over. Did you ever do that? Do what? Chef full-time. Chef full-time, yeah. Let's say you had to yeah. give this up, right? Podcast-wise? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. How many hours yeah. is it? What, but you, the hours, what do you work there? My kids would have to be older. It's it. not a... If you really want to do it, and this is something I want to 
I was thinking about today of just like your edge once you have kids and get married. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw it on this the movie Free Solo. When, once he got a girlfriend, yep. he started fucking up on the mountain. Once ah, he really? got a girlfriend that he cared about, he started fucking up. You know, that he happened started falling. Joey Chestnut. He just wasn't, yes. But anyway, <sighs> if, for a chef specifically, like you have to start it and get your like grit grit before you have kids. You cannot. Really? And Bourdain famously has said this in one of the last books that he did was like, if you're 35, maybe think about doing something else. It's funny, man. I've, I've said that to people before about other, th like acting and directing and all that other shit. Like if, if you, didn't, you haven't been yeah, doing it, then don't do it. And look, there are exceptions to every rule, right? But there, there is. Yes. Yes. So I could maybe, I think pastries may be a different story, but I could probably have a little shop maybe. Uh -huh. when I'm older, but as far as like a really successful executive chef that like has the grit, has the experience, it is too late for me. Okay. And that's crazy to think. But it's true. There's some professions that it's just fucking true. If you haven't been doing it since mm -hmm. your 20s and like working your way up and dishwasher to this to yeah. 10 years here to a year, it's like you just in that industry, even going to school, if you're going to go to school for it right now, too late. Yeah. I, if you're it, 35, 40, and you're trying to go to culinary school, again, you may be able to have a place, right? Yes. Uh, or you I, will not be a chef. Yeah. And I, I feel the same way. I did an interview with uh, uh, a guy named Corey. Um, he's got a podcast called Tra Trailer Geeks and Teaser Gods. Oh, yeah. And I did an interview with him. Love him. Um, yeah, it was like two hours about my entire life and career and all that stuff. And, uh, I, he was asking about podcast advice mm -hmm. and I was like, man, you're not going to really know how shit is shaking out or how to interview or talk to people for at least a hundred episodes. Yeah. And, and that's, that was like, he was like, oh shit. You know, a lot of people are like that where they're like, oh man, that seems like a long time, but anything you want to be great at in life, you should have been doing it for a, a while. Um, so that makes sense when you're saying like chef wise. Yeah. Cause I mean, you have kids and all that other stuff and then life gets in the way. The hours of a chef on the come up are almost unthinkable. What, it, what is it? Is it's, it like production hours? It's production hours without production pay. Uh, a lot of, yeah, production hours without production pay and just probably disappointment after disappointment and, you know, different you have to be you have to go through all the ranks right right so dishwasher to, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know to cutting shit like sous chef to you have to do all the working on the line runner expediter i mean you have to be all these things for a certain amount of years yeah. before you're even thought of as like okay maybe you know your way around the kitchen because it's one of those kind of like bartenders where like we don't want any, they don't want anyone to realize how easy it is. Mm -hmm. They don't want anyone to infiltrate because this is their thing, right? Yeah. So they have to make you feel like you could never do it. Like you can never take my fucking job. And you're like, a fucking monkey could take your job, by the way. I'm talking about a bartender, not a chef. Right. But a monkey could do your job. <laughs> don't fucking look at me like I'm an idiot, right? But that's how they have to make you feel. And I think chefs have to do the same. And it's sort of this hazing and all. I mean, you get hazed constantly. And if you can handle it, mixologist, you can stick around. Mixologist, not a bartender. So anybody listening? It's a, I'm kidding. Uh, anyone who's a bartender that thinks that they're like better than any other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just like, come on, man. You're better than me? Come on. You're fucking better than me? You just burn an orange peel and then, you know. Drive it around the rim. Now those dicks, whatever, but they aren't bartenders. They aren't like <laughs> fast paced, like handling fucking thirty orders at once. Bartender. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see you do it. I'd support you in that. That'd be awesome. I think. What? You'd to, be great at it. To, to have a little bakery or something. I mean, yeah, 
It, it is crazy hard work. There's some friends of ours that, that own one in town, uh, Red Eye Bakery downtown. Yeah. If you come to downtown Wilmington. Um, yeah. We were, I, I had a meeting down there with. Uh, the hours are crazy, and especially for bakery. Yes. So like th- those are the opposite, which is why I say I could probably do pastry because it's like you get up super early. Yep. Right. And you have to like make all these things, whatever, for the day. But you're in bed earlier because the bakery closes at very early yes three two or three right yeah so you're good we'll give them a shout out to red eye bakery downtown they serve uh, black rifle coffee which is awesome yeah and uh i asked her what i was like how is everything you know and and, uh the woman who owned it and she goes i'm exhausted 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 i was like what time do you typically have to to get up and go in she's like 4 30 oh yeah if not earlier yeah for sure uh, for but because sure. it, it, it depends on when shipments come and like I guess food comes in the middle of the night for some reason like mm-hmm. for a lot of places mm-hmm. and I was just like oh boy she was like I am out by like 7 8 p.m. I am gone yeah so perfect no, maybe, maybe not <laughs> perfect but a late night bakery James a late night bakery now listen that could be perfect. Sports how bar. many times do I <laughs> fucking drink <laughs> not a lot but how many times when I'm drinking am I like where is the dessert place? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And you're always disappointed because the only places that are open are like... Shit. Yeah. Shit places. <laughs> full of poop and shit. Yeah. Poop N- and shit. They're full of poop and shit. And nothing's good. Nothing's good. Nothing's good enough for me when I'm drunk and I need a fucking dessert. Yeah. So that's why I might if see when milk bars open till. Because right. I could... Stumble into milk bar. We'll peep it. Get myself a crack pie. Dude, crack pie drunk at like fucking one in the morning. You should, you should yeah. save it then. You sh- yeah. You should go yeah. there and then save it. Because it's, it's probably not open late night, I would imagine, right? No. no. What do we usually get at, at, uh, in New York when we're drunk? A gyro. Oof. Love those gyros. Street meat. Um, and late then, night uh, gyro, dude. It's name never a, a great idea. Yeah. Name a pizza place at that point. Where you're exactly. Like, Papa. Papa. Yeah. Papa's. Papa. Papa. Papa Ray's. Papa Ray's. Ray's. It's always, there's 900 yeah, Ray's in yeah. the city. Yeah. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny Mark. Vadouche. Vinny Vaducci's. Yeah. Oh, Vinny Vaducci's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, uh, we, we've Vinny been Vaducci's. rambling on. We even gotten to our sponsor shapes. Oh, whoops. We've been chatting about life here. We got to one. Yeah, we did. Uh, next one is uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, just a little spot for them. Just did a little commercial for them. So if it pops up on the interwebs, uh, that's why. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love them. I love ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And uh, I was happy to do it for those guys. Um, that is the best mattress on the planet. And the 36 month, no interest, pay as you go program right around this time of year uh, is amazing. They're, they're, they're going to fucking pop off with a huge yeah. Halloween deal. And um, because of the ghost. Yes. And uh, they're also going to do one for, for Black Friday as well. That is supposed to be bigger than what they're already offering, which is fucking insane to me because you're already getting $200 off mattresses and free pillows and all that stuff with all your orders. Um, and then if you're military or, or, or first responder, you get an extra 15% off. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to offer for Halloween. Either way, finest mattresses on the planet go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get yours dude there's nothing like a great night's sleep uh i've been doing a lot of it huh yeah you've been really tired i've just been like getting a lot of sleep and it almost feels like too much but anyway go ahead a lot um it's i blame it on the ghost bed that b12 a b12 will wake you up you know once i lay down in that ghost bed it's the best like you too, though. When you actually lay down in it, you'll go to sleep. I, here's my problem. Because, I, look, I don't only sleep five or six hours a night anyways. I always have. And that, that's not like a, a bragging thing. It sucks, actually. Because um, I would love to get more sleep. But uh, it, the bed is so comfortable that I'm like, ah, just watch the game in here. I don't need to go upstairs and fucking sit on the couch. I'd rather just watch yeah, it in exactly. the goddamn bed. Exactly. And that's Can my problem. Can they make couches? No, they do not. Not yet. I asked that, actually. I was I like, man, if you guys, soon. I think they will. You got to ship not. it though. Cause these get shipped to your house. That's so. right. You can't get it in a box. Maybe, 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 uh, next up we have strikeforceenergy.com. It's going to be <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Killing the this the entire trip. Um, we could put some of that in here. You right? can. 
Yeah, you could put that in the, in the old Belair. Famously, is a little bit, you know, put a little, a little bit of the the uh, original fun. in there. How fun! I know, real good, and not uh, suppository, like they told us to say. Correct. They did not tell us that actually. So you were incorrect on that. Strike Force was saying, please say. However. They did a because they if you go to their Instagram at Strike Force Energy, they're always doing like cocktail mixes. Mm-hmm. They did the White Claw one the other day. Yeah, right after we talked about it. Yeah, uh, I saw one they were doing the in White Claw Pure. Ah, remember White? I was telling you White Claw Pure, yes. so it's like no flavor whatsoever. Yeah, and then you can put whatever you want in it. Blammo, blammo, blammo. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you don't put Strike Force in White Claw Pure, who are you? I don't. You're not a friend of what mine. What are you even doing don't know with you. your life? Don't even know you. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. They get a 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle that you can get. Who add on? Who add on? Uh, use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off at StrikeForceEnergy.com. Last but not least, Jabe, StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Oh, you right? There it is. Blammo. Blammo, blammo, blammo. Christmas is around the corner. Get yes. a kit. That that's a great stocking stuffer, man. All it this really shit is. is. So get a kit. Uh get that smolder aftershave, dude. That is the jam. I use it every I've used this I've used all their products for years. Years and years and years at this point. Um uh, I love it. And I'm afraid that they're not going to be a sponsor anymore. And then I'm like, I won't be able to use my own promo code. I mean, you're going to still have to get it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, obviously. But I want to use my own promo code. We just won't get the discount. Because I do that. There's something that makes me feel better about checking out with a promo code in anything in life. Where I'm like, ah, I got a deal on this. And you just see it. It's like a mental thing. It's true. Even if it's just a little bit. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You feel great about it. Feel like you're on the inside track on the inside circle. Yes. You know something other people don't know. You do. You do. Uh, look, straightrazors.com's got everything you need uh, to be a real man in this life, and I'm about to use that mustache wax. Uh, That's back right. by popular demand. I'm gonna use I'm gonna grow a mustache for you because you've asked for it. I said you could do whatever you wanted with my hair mm-hmm. and mustache going forward. You've asked me to grow one, so I will for you. Mm-hmm. Um, go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And now I'm going to get into this story because uh, you were recording some test pilots of, of podcasts. Yes. Uh, with a lady. Yes. And uh, I watched them the other night. Uh-huh. <laughs> you dated a lot of dirtbags, it sounds like. And... And when did, what did I say? That you moved to England oh. <laughs> to date somebody for six months. And then when you had to get a job, you just, you were like, oh, I'm all good here. And then you <laughs> left. But the way you described this person was everybody you date, like they're all the worst looking people ever. And they're I'm not really the surprised. worst looking. You said, and, and I quote, he was, hor- he had horrible teeth. Look, not very, horrible. Very there was pale. a gap. Very okay. pale. Uh, very pale. Very, very short. How short was he? Look, he was my height. Oh, fuck. That's tiny. James, you're a tiny little dancer. Yes, I'm 5'2". <laughs> <laughs> oh, but gosh, it was fun. Yeah. yeah I bet it was. You know, it I was. didn't know that's why you went to England. You've always said you lived there for a little bit. And I was like, ah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. So now you having me grow like a mustache because I was like, usually that's not a request by women. They right. hate it. And then you go to. No, I love. Especially around me, the holidays. For me, it's like, like I always say three dog night. There's something about like the Eagles member, the guy that died. I agree. I'm with you on this, by the way. Yeah. Who's the guy that Glenn died? Fry. In the, Glenn Fry. Yeah. So when Glenn Fry had the like longer hair, the like handlebar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, look, that's what I'm talking about. I'm all 70s as well, and I dig it. Yeah. I, I was. I'm just surprised that you were like, "Hey, do this," because usually we go to look with the holidays coming up and Halloween. And cause let's face it, it starts at Halloween, right? It does because it's mo, it's Movember. Movember, but uh, just as far as like the holidays and eating and mm. hanging out with everybody, mm-hmm. party wise, yes, Halloween, yes. it starts there. And then Thanksgiving, then obviously Christmas and New Year's and all that shit. All I hear is other women who come up and bitch to me about their husbands. About their husbands. Mustache. Mustaches. Yeah. And, and I always am like, they look so much better. That's what I say. 
And uh, like we have two or three friends that their husbands grow mustaches. Mm-hmm. They hate it. I'm always like, I know, gross, huh? Yeah. But I'm always like, they look better. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I like it. There's only a couple that I'm like, eh. But uh, I was surprised when you were like, hey, grow one with the handlebars. And I was like, all right, cool. Yes, yes, yes. Very. Uh, and wear like a, se- you know, those button up like 70s shirts that you have. Sure. And like a jean yeah. and a boot. Very. Uh, check out the breast exam on Channel 9, Peter. You know? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's it's Dale is what it is. Kind of, yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Uh, again, certain level, of, like we all the meetings on stuff can't do that. Obviously, next week, so I'll start it the week after. But uh, it's a power move if you can get away with it for a year and not, you know, worry about meetings and all that other shit. Yeah. Because uh, from dudes, first thing you hear is, "Man, that's a sweet stash," you know. Yeah, What's it yeah, for? Yeah. Like, is it a joke? What's or? it for? I know. I'd love to be able to say no. It's not. It's just my lifestyle. It's just my life. It's just my lifestyle. Uh, do we have a crime corner today, Japes? Whoa. Yes. Yelling? I do. I do. I do. Blamo, blamo, blamo. <laughs> crime corner. You do the other one. I do this. I'm doing, short... I'm doing all of them for you. You do the other crime corner first, and then I'll do the second one. Okay. Crime corner. Crime corner. <laughs> Crime corner. There it is. So the only thing I need to find on my phone, don't fucking come for me. I'm just finding who, what direct de- uh, detective was working on the case. Ah. Chuck Nasty. You know him? Chuck Nasty? <laughs> That's not even his Instagram handle. It's not? His, no, his Instagram is ICPLC Terry 79 I wonder if it's insane clown posse. Chuck Nasty. Chuck Nasty. Underneath. I do know a Chuck Nasty, though. Right? I'm sure you do. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have to know a I Chuck do. Nasty. I do, I do. And he's so disgusting. So anyways, and he's disgusting. Cool. I know one Chuck and he's disgusting. Uh, well, good work, detective. <laughs> 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 um, so, he sent me, thank you, a severed human head found inside box of sex toys. Woman asked her friend to hide for her that's the headline okay do you have questions i've got answers now listen great (laughs) the remains of a severed human head have been discovered in a box in northern spain huh no i didn't know i thought you could kill people in spain spain yeah i actually never know like other countries you know like what the laws are Yeah, yeah yeah with killing yeah they vary, don't you think, always, from country to country? Always have. Yeah. Um, so it's prompted the arrest of a woman in her 60s. I wouldn't have guessed that this was a crime of a woman in her 60s. No. But hey, equal opportunity. The woman identified only as 61-year-old Carmen M. Ooh, ah, all right. Was arrested on Saturday in the port of Castro Udunales. She allegedly gave the box to a friend for safekeeping. So the while the police searched her home. So her partner, her mm-hmm. 67-year-old partner, had been missing. Okay. The cops were finally going to come to her house, right, and right. search. So she gave a box of sex toys to her friend to hold for her and was just like, hey, the embarrassment of the cops finding these sex toys, I just need you to keep the... Keep this box of sex toys for me. Sure. Because I don't want the cops to find. Sure, sure, sure. My sex toys. Yeah. In the box of sex toys, though. Was the head. Head of the partner. Yeah. Huh. You know? I wonder if they took it too far in like a, some type of strangle basin. Yeah. Sitch, you know, or... you never really know. Uh, while the box was in the friend's possession, however, a putrid smell began to emerge, obviously. obviously. And then she called the police. Uh, the arrest took place... Um, in her building, and it was not immediately clear how long the box had been in the friend's possession. Ah, mm. it never is, mm. is it? Mm. A spokesman for the Civil Guard confirmed the arrest of the 61-year-olds in relation to the case. Um, you know, A, don't ever hold a box for someone when the cops are coming to their house. Yeah. Or B, do it. 
Because you're a good friend. Man. Do you want to be Fleet White? Do you want to be someone's Fleet White or not? That's the question you always have to ask yourself, right? And Fleet White was who? Famously from the Jean Benet Ramsey case. Yeah, JBR. The the family's good friend that seemed to always be around covering stuff up. Yeah. Fleet. Yeah. Great name as well, right? Great name. For the perfect cover up guy. Criminal. Name. You would never name your baby that, but yeah. Not even for a criminal. Like it's the perfect hiding name because you're like this rich white guy in Colorado. Your yeah. name's Fleet White. That's like great. no one thinks you're gonna do You know Fleet? Oh, anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. But oh, yeah. good guy, stand up guy. He would never do anything, right? Great parties. Yeah. Um the person behind the remains is not confirmed, uh, but they have strong links to the woman's former partner. Okay. Um, so did she do it? Did she what? Was she the one that chopped off the head? I assume. I mean, it, clearly it's, uh, she just got arrested for it. Okay. Look, I just want to ask. Because uh, I didn't know sure, if Sure, and I uh, love, I, I welcome the questions always with aiding, Crime Corner. I didn't know if it's like, you know, aiding and uh, beheading. <laughs> Blam. Um, um, yeah, no, she obviously killed him. Okay. Why does she have the fucking? Why does she have his head? Yeah. <laughs> in a box of sex toys in yeah. her house, and again, stranger things have happened, right? Some say that's the ultimate. Jean Vanet, yeah. right? So stranger things have happened that dead people can be found in your house that you didn't kill. I I I tend to believe that there's it's impossible. Yeah. For that to happen, but yeah. look, there's some people that can get away with it. No, I agree. I agree on this one. Jean Benet's family. G- GBR, yeah. Um, GBR. So some people can get away with that, but um, I'm guessing this lady will be linked. And I think probably just the hiding of it and giving it to her friend alone mm. is not going to look good. It's not going to look good. It's going to stink too, man. I bet what? you that head stunk. Yeah, so that's what happened, is the friend didn't even know that she had the head. And then? She thought she had a box of sex toys, and then it started to smell. More oh, than a boy. box of used sex toys should smell, right? Yeah. I'm sure she was like, uh. She was like, uh. For a while, it was probably like, dang, I guess those sex toys were not cleaned or whatever. Washed. And then finally, it was like, okay, what's going on? Sure, this is getting pretty musky in here. Uh, man, how old was the dude? They say that? 67. He was 67. Mm-hmm. She was 61. They have a <sighs> box of sex toys also. I wonder, I, I wonder what the rules are on that. Like, if you kill somebody that old. Are you, you know, like, do you get less years? Huh? Um, like a 67 year old, you're like, look, he was probably only going to live sure. another 13 years. So we're going to give I you 13 that years. should be taken into account. Maybe. To be honest with you. Maybe. If you kill somebody older. Yeah. You just, should get less than killing a young person, yes, a kid, yes. stuff like this. Yeah. That's when it's like, yo. But when they're dicing. Ah. Uh, what? How much life did you really take away from them? I know, I know. Well, look, Jabes, uh, you can always fight the system and uh, submit a petition. That's like my big platform. Yeah, like Kim like, Kardashian's trying to get people out yeah, of jail. And you're I like, just want to make sure that, like, if you killed somebody that was seventy or older, mm-hmm. you get a commuted sentence. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, you can and play I your, like go meet with people yeah, like you play in your my cards, right? in my business suit. Yep. A lot of I'm hair practically flips. a businesswoman, right? Here I am. Here I am. I'm a businesswoman. <laughs> That's what I was thinking the other day too. Is like, I get confused with all these ladies that are that are bo- that are bosses. Yeah. I'm a boss. Yeah. But are you like? I need to know who the real bosses are. Sure. I'm getting confused because pe- girls now are like, just act like a boss and dress like a boss, and yep. you're the boss, and you're a boss bitch. Who do I talk to, though? That's Who really the boss. Who is your boss? Which one? I, here's what I want to... I just want to know which one of you guys are actually, like, the head of whatever company... Yes. You... Work. Who's your boss? Right? Yeah. There's wanna, just so many bosses now. Right. A lot of bosses. A lot of bosses. Hashtag boss. Hashtag boss. Boss babe. Boss bitch. Take the leap. Yep. Uh, a lot of them out there. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? Okay. Okay. Well, that sounds James. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh. I'm gonna give this to uh, Diego Armando 
Metadona. Oh, you you got Dude, loose on that. Got loose on a fucking Maradona doc on HBO doc last night, and uh, again sunk into the ghost bed, and I was like, I'm not moving. You were out cold. James is out. Yeah, you were out cold, and I was like, I'm not moving. I'm not taking this to the living room. No, oh. I am so comfortable and watch this fucking thing on Absolutely. the on the ghost bed. It's, Once it's I'm asleep, who cares? New doc on HBO. Uh, still to this day, HBO and Netflix are the the, the best ones doing it in the the doc game. I would venture to say HBO still has Netflix beat as of right now. Oh, on docs? Maybe. For documentaries, HBO, there's nobody else doing it. Maybe. Uh, um, a- as well. The reason why this guy was revolutionary to me is uh, soccer, as an American child, isn't really that popular. Mm. Um, we, um, look, the Pele was obviously way before my time. Right. You heard about it, but you didn't get to see it. was kind of like Babe Ruth, right? And then everybody said that this guy was the next... Pele and he played when I was a kid and like uh, I, I watched him on TV um, and like the World Cup and things like that uh, but it's that's only Mar- every f- four years right and what, what's his name sorry Maradona Diego Armando Maradona yeah just the last name but Maradona yeah okay uh, yeah um, <laughs> I, or is a, is a white person Maradona you know Maradona okay 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 whatever and I watched him play in the World Cup, and as a, as a kid, they won the World Cup. Like, and that was the first one that I remember watching. Now I watch it every year, and I'm, it's one of those bucket list things that I would really love to go to because uh, it looks like a fucking blast. And, uh, but I didn't know about his life that much. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of like the first sports star, um, him and like maybe Doc Gooden, that were like, oh, they're doing coke and they're getting in trouble and going to jail and shit like that. But I didn't, he just, after that, look, you know, your lifespan as a soccer player pretty much ends in your 30s. And then after that, I didn't know what happened to him. Right. Um, And there wasn't another guy that came around probably until David Beckham, who was like for worldwide shit for us. We were like, oh, my God, this guy's amazing. Um, And uh, to see this documentary of his life and how fucking insane it was, was just it was beyond anything that I imagined. And the reason why is you think, I, I think at least, or I thought until this doc last night, that the media was, and paparazzi was like crazy and you walk around and it's, you know, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that. Um, it was, it's so soul crushing, literally over there, soul crushing that every time he stepped out of a building, they smashed his body in, and he, That's what I saw. he just couldn't move. That's all I really saw of it, which, like, as soon as I... Every other scene, it was just like... And he just looked like... I don't know. Trapped. He just I don't didn't, know how he, there's you live. There's just constantly have people around him just having, like, creating this tiny little... Like Kim Kardashian, really. But, it, but, it, but it's like a thousand people. But here's the difference. Is now, or, or just maybe in America, I don't know what it's, it's like over there... It, there is some respect of like, hey, man, we'll give you like 10 feet, right? There, they don't give a fuck. They're trying to like grab your hair. Yeah. Your th- I mean, it was so wild. I to think see for, for soccer stars. For soccer stars. which stars Look, in if particular. you're outside of the U- U.S., like I'm a diehard sports fan across the board. I'll, I will watch anything pretty much, right? Even a game five of an NBA or WNBA finals. Um, Whoa. I recognize <laughs> That soccer is the biggest sport in the entire world. Mm-hmm. However, the U.S. men's team is just not good at it, nor will they be for many, many years, in my opinion. And uh, um, those guys are the real rock stars as far as athletes go around the world. Um, may, I would put NBA maybe second, like Kobe and LeBron. Um, but this guy was a fucking massive rock star around the world. And the weirdest part about him that I didn't know of like his whole downfall was... He got bought out by this Italian team, so he had to go move Naples, to Italy and play. Yeah, yeah. Um, won a bunch of championships with a team that was fucking terrible, and he was like the pride of the city, the country, and all this shit. Well, the problem with the World Cup is when it rolls around, you have to play for the country that you were born in. So he had to play for Argentina, um, and then they played Italy in the quarterfinals to go to the final of the World Cup, and it came down to him and a penalty kick. And he made it. Italy was out. And then afterwards, the press and the, the way they trashed him, they, they called him the fucking devil and all this shit. And like, I, 
I personally thought that just went on today because of social media and the way the news stories are always in your face. It was actually going on back then in like the late 80s and you were just like, Jesus Christ, man. It was awful. I mean, to the point where they would, they'd send him to jail and like, I mean, yeah. They were wiretapping his phones oh um, for like Coke, like little bags yeah, of Coke yeah, and like yeah. a prostitute. And you're like, hey, man, that's little not... Little Kendall Jenner size. Yeah. Bags. You're just like, dude, that's not enough to send you to jail. Yeah. And uh, it was the craziest thing ever. But uh, as a kid, that was our generation's like soccer star where you were just like, shit, man. Um, and watch this doc if you haven't peeped it on, on HBO. Give it a gozies. Um, if you don't like subtitles, I can stay away from it. It's all on. Yeah, if you don't like reading your movies. Yeah. Um, but loved it, and uh, it was amazing. But uh, that was my dude, and I just didn't know what happened to him. What a crazy, crazy story that was. Uh, I love when that happens. When you watch something unexpectedly, you have thoughts about it, and then it completely blindsides yeah, exactly. you, and you're like, oh, Jesus, that's awful. Exactly. Um, so, anywho. Uh, check out that on HBO. Jabes, this is a fun show. We'll see if the green works. By the time this episode airs, people will be, oh, you won or you lost. Yeah, We'll exactly. see if my green works. No, but that's the fun it part worked, about it. It worked or it see. didn't work. Or yeah, it didn't exactly. work, and then I'll never wear green again. So, see. That'll be the new superstish. I know. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>